What's up, everybody? My name is Aaron, and welcome to the Mad Maker Studio, and welcome back for what I believe is going to be the very last episode of Astrologaster. We ended last episode with Lady Emma Sharp coming back to our practice after successfully murdering four or five of her husbands. I've lost count at this point, but this woman is terrifying. I'm scared to be alone with her. I can only hope that my manservant William is nearby, but just in case he's not, everyone say a quick prayer for Dr. Simon Foreman. Ah, God give you good day, madam. Good day to you, sir, and well met. Before we begin, May I offer you my deepest condolences for the death of your husband, M Mr. Moore? Oh, yes, Lancelot. He died on the battlefield in Ireland, as twas to be expected. Indeed, twas my reason for sending him, as you correctly surmised upon our last meeting. Ah, uh, madam, I... For in truth, the little shrub humper was testing my patience. If I'd had to endure another word of his wretched sonnets, I would have had to beat him to death myself. Having the Irish do it merely saved me the bother. Uh, madam, are you quite well? You do not seem quite yourself this day, if I may remark on it. Dr. Foreman, I am more myself than you have ever seen me. For during these past years, I have been playing a role. A role that has served me well, to be sure. But I am grown tired of it. Indeed, I am not proud of my dissembling. I am not proud of some other things besides. And doubtless you are come to unburden yourself by confessing your, uh, what those things are. What? Nay, of course not. As I was saying, whilst my dissimulations have afforded me wealth and status, such a life as I have lived has not fulfilled me. For though I have been married many times, and known many men, I have always lacked one important thing. A moral compass? And that thing is love. In short... I have found love, Dr. Foreman, and the object of my affection is not one of these privileged popinjays I've met at the royal court. Nay, tis a real man, a man who knows what it is to make his own way in the world. Oh, you, you mean to say, you mean you and I? Verily, upon seeing him play Tamara in Titus Andronicus at the Globe one even, I was, well, my heart was took. I see. You are in love with a the player, then, I take it. Aye. And I wish to marry him. But first, I would know whether such a match be advisable. Is our love true? Or is my considerable coin and property where his true affections lie? Such a deception would not surprise me in truth. Well, nay, doubtless it would not. Let us see whether the stars can tell us. Okay. There's a few things we have to unpack. First off, I wish I had a webcam right now so you could see my face. I was dancing in my chair, pointing at Emma because we freaking called it. She's been murdering her husbands and she outright just admitted it. Oh my gosh. Next, Simon. Simon has a delusion that she might have been interested in him. You, Simon, knowing Full well, she just confessed to you that she has been killing off all of her husbands and you want to get in on that? You are crazy. And now we must, I must save this young thespian Humphrey Bell from a similar fate. Because madam, I believe that he too shall perish under your hand. Should I marry the young player who has won my heart? Emma's bow hides evil intentions. Uranus falling in Taurus, this indicates evil. Emma's head has been turned. She is deluded in her hopes. Neptune in detriment and retrograde, this suggests being out of touch with reality. The mind of Emma's beloved is on the coin he would inherit when Emma dies. Mercury, this indicates intelligence. If Emma and I were romantic partners, I would not trust her. Mm-hmm. 
The sun in detriment in Aquarius, this indicates untrustworthiness. Venus, this represents a romantic partner. I hope we get to see Humphrey one more time to warn him. Emma's duty as a wife would be impossible to fulfill. The moon falling in Scorpio, this suggests being impossible to please. It is cruel to deprive a man of children. Mars in detriment in Libra, this indicates cruelty. Oops. Emma's relationship with her young man has changed her. Ludo, this represents perspective and transformation. A marriage between Emma and her beau would be faithful and enduring. Jupiter, domicile, and Sagittarius, this suggests faithfulness. Saturn, this represents time and aging. If Emma and I were romantic partners, I would not trust her. That is very true. Duty as a wife would be impossible to fulfill. It is cruel to deprive a man of children. It is interesting that she has had all of these marriages and not one child, presumably. Ooh. I don't think Mr. Bell would be after her money. Doesn't seem like that kind of guy. Uh, and then again, it's like, have they have they already had a relationship? Or have they already been talking to each other? Or she's just fallen in love with watching him on the play? I do not think she has been changed. Once a black widow, always a black widow. You should not wed this man. Oh? And why is that? Your duty as a wife may be impossible to fulfill. I'm not sure I take your meaning. I assure you there's no trouble in that department. Well, to be frank, he is a young man, is he not? With his life full before him? And at your age, you cannot expect to bear him many children. The star suggests that to deny him such blessings would be most cruel. Ah, oh, I see. Though I do not care much for your intimation, I must own there is something in what the stars say. Hmm. Methinks I must discourse upon the matter with him. I would not wish cruelty upon my dear Humphrey. Sure you wouldn't. Look, look at that evil face, that evil look she's giving us. Get this woman out of my chambers. The Quirant did wish to know whether she should marry the young player she is in love with. I did tell the Quirant that if she were to marry the young player, she would be doing him a disservice as she is too old to bear him any children. But thanks, the Quirant took my advice rather ill. Look, we never have to see her face again. How vexing love is the desire it creates in a woman to put a man's needs above her own. Humphrey Bell, our thoughts we must disclose. Though your acting is fine, you were too many blows. Tis for, tis for, tis for we find, we find not a star sits down. Sit down. Oh, thank God, he's still alive. Good day, Mr. Bell. I see here in my notes the last time you came to us for counsel regarding Mistress Burbage and her tender advances. Aye, and the advice you gave me to cool her down and networked her treat. Since I've been putting them herbs in her potage, she spends so much time in the privy, hardly ever see her now. That is... Well, I am glad my advice achieved the desired outcome and... Mistress Burbage is no longer bothering you. Tis about another lady I'm come this day. Tis a member of the audience who comes to all my performances and brings me flowers and sweetmeats. A mature lady. A widow, innit? Another one? <laughs> On my word. You are most ill-fortuned, Mr. Bell. Verily, are no young players safe these days from being preyed upon by lecherous old ladies? Tis not all ladies, Dr. Foreman. Not this one, anyways. Emma ain't like any of the other ladies I've met. In truth, Dr. Foreman, we wish to be wed. I love her, innit? 
Ah, uh, then what is your trouble? Well, I've heard tell of some vexing things. There are them that say she has a heart of stone and only marries to get her hands on a man's money. Though I have none, and uh, she's very rich. But she has been widowed many times, and there's even a rumour saying she's had her hand in her husband's deaths. Oh, verily? How shocking. Aye, I must own to being a trifle shook by it, and maybe a bit excited as well, uh, b but mainly shook, innit? Doubtless you are, for it is most frightening if there be any truth to these rumours. We must consult the stars and see whether it be wise for you to marry. Should Humphrey Bell wed this wealthy widow, and what will become of him if he does? We are going to do our best to save this boy. Should I marry the wealthy widow? No. Let's find out why. The lady's psychotic instincts regarding the amassing of wealth have changed. Neptune in detriment and retrograde. This indicates a reversal of psychosis. The rumors about the lady are cruel. Mars in detriment and Libra. This suggests cruelty. Humphrey can expect a pleasant inheritance from this lady as she is very rich. Venus exalted in Pisces. This suggests pleasantness. In time, and if he keeps faith, Humphrey will have children with this lady. Jup Jupiter, domicile, and Sagittarius. This advises faith. Saturn. This represents time. Beneath her gentle exterior, the, labor the lady harbors hidden motives. The moon, domicile, and cancer. This represents a gentle woman. A death will occur on the couple's honeymoon. Pluto. This indicates death. The lady has a creative approach to marriage and is not to be trusted. The sun in detriment in Aquarius. This suggests untrustworthiness. And Mercury, this represents creativity. So, I'm not taking any notes again. And I've just been so... All this information is coming at me at once now. So, from what I've gathered of Emma's character, she has amassed a lot of wealth because her husbands have died. And so she's out here saying, oh, I'm looking for love now. I have wealth. I need love. But something is telling me that it doesn't matter how much money you have. If she starts to become bored of you, she's going to get rid of you. Please do not marry this woman. Please, Humphrey, I'm saving you. Please let, please let us save this boy that on this day. Ooh, my stomach is in knots. Mr. Bell, it has been my privilege to guide you over the years in matters of work and in life. Wisely, I hope, but certainly with the greatest sense of care for your well-being. Indeed, I have come to think of you as a father might think of a son. It is a responsibility I have not taken lightly, and in loco parentis, as it were, I feel an obligation to... Sir, begging your pardon, sir, but I'm going to stop you right there because I need to know in it. Should I marry Emma or not? Alas, young sir, I am afeard I must advise you in the strongest of terms not to marry this woman. Oh, you sure, though? Aye, for the stars indicate your beloved has a creative approach to marriage. Alas, she is not to be trusted. If you marry, you will be in mortal danger, Mr. Bell. Oh, my days. Tis all true, then. Oh, well, like you say, I best not marry her. But I will not lie, tis lamentable, innit? Fare you well, Dr. Foreman. Now, when you leave this room, I don't want to find out that you've gone behind my back and against my advice and married this woman anyway, because I've, I've done everything I can now to try to spare you. Good luck out there, Mr. Bell. The Quarant didn't wish to know whether he should marry a wealthy widow. I did advise the Quarant not to marry the woman lest he be murdered by her. I think the Quarant was a little pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. This was the final consultation for this Quarant. If only we came not from different worlds. I, a poor humble player, she, a wealthy murderess. Never the twain in it. Many or 
I remain utterly fascinated by this woman. <laughs> this woman just has so many layers I never would have expected of her. Good morrow, Mistress Payne. It has been quite some time since I last saw you. Uh, did you ever hear from the Archbishop? I recall your husband was intending to write to him, expressing your concerns about the Continentals. Aye, we did write, but he never replied. Not that I am surprised, mind you, as they do say that Archbishop Whitgift is a very idle man. Not to speak of the unsavory goings-on within the walls of Lambeth Palace. They say that in the great dining hall, the Archbishop and his guests do feast and carouse from dusk till dawn. And it is said that in some of the palace rooms, they indulge in fornication and sodomitical sins. Verily, indeed. Then, doubtless that leaves him very little time to reply to every... Truly, methinks being surrounded by such decadence and corruption of the flesh is likely to have made the Archbishop very hard. Aye, bearing witness to so much vice would make a man very hard indeed. Ah. Uh... Hard, Dr. Foreman? Insensible to the needs and difficulties of ordinary folk such as you and I. Verily, I do not wonder that such a hard man gave me no satisfaction. Which is why I am come to you this day, Dr. Foreman. Something did trouble me last night, and I would have you tell me what it might have been. I will if I can, madam. Prithee, describe it to me. Well, at first was the noise of a boat that did awaken me. I got up out of bed and went to the window to see what was. As you know, on 4th Street, we are right by the banks of the Thames. In the moonlight, I could just make out a ferry crossing the river, loaded up with large barrels. And you thought it suspicious? Aye, indeed, for the hour was very late and the boat's lamp was not lit. I did not wake Mr. Payne to ask his opinion, for, in truth, he has told me he wishes to hear no more about the things I see from our window. So, I am come to you. For I can have no rest until I know who those men were and what they were doing. Who knows what foul deeds may be afoot in Lambeth Town. Mayhap the men I saw were Catholic spies, engaging in some manner of nefarious plot against the realm. Then let us see. What does God have to say regarding this boat you saw crossing the Thames last night? Was it some kind of elaborate Catholic plot? Or is there a more likely explanation? I saw a boat crossing the Thames in the dead of night. Are they Catholic plotters? Mistress Payne is unpleasant and delusional. Venus falling in Virgo, this suggests unpleasantness. Neptune in detriment in Virgo, this represents delusions. Mistress Payne wants, the, wants to change the world. That is the legacy she intends to leave. Pluto, this represents transformation. Mistress Payne is unhappy with her children. They are doubtless grown up and now are neglecting her. The moon in detriment in Capricorn. This represents an unhappy woman, Mary Payne. The goods the boat was transporting were of, question were of questionable provenance. Mars detriment in Libra. This suggests untrustworthiness. The information should be reported to the authorities, ideally a friend or acquaintance with some connection to them. The sun, this represents authority. Boat's journey was undertaken for evil purposes. Uranus falling in Taurus, this indicates evil. The ambitions of disloyal, untamed forces are at play here. Jupiter domicile and in retrograde, this suggests faithfulness in reverse. Saturn in retrograde, this represents constraint in reverse. So, I'm inclined to go with, uh, she is delusional. She's going above and beyond to try and leave behind some kind of legacy. I don't know her relationship with her children, but the fact that she hangs out with her niece a lot might be very telling. Madam, 
we must approach this in a calm, reasonable manner. If a grand plot against the realm were afoot, is it likely that it would be taking place at the end of your street? How now, Mistress Payne? There is surely a perfectly innocent explanation for a boat with a broken lamp crossing a river at night. Then the stars say it was no Catholic plotters at work. <sighs> Mistress Payne, I must wonder whether there be a reason for your grand imaginings of Catholics around every corner plotting against the English realm. Might this fixation be occasioned by painful affairs close to home that you would rather not think on? For instance, mayhap you have a son who has lately not writ you a letter. I do assure you, loneliness at your time of life is quite normal. Many women in your situation do oft call upon their doctors when they feel... Hold, sir. I am a very busy woman and I take my responsibility to my community most seriously. I have not the time for, nor do I appreciate your idle speculations regarding my domestic affairs. Mark me, Dr. Foreman, if it verily was a band of Catholic conspirators I saw last night, twill not be the last we hear of them. The querent did wish to know whether a boat crossing the Thames in the middle of the night was part of some Catholic plot against the realm. I did dispel my querent's fanciful notion that the boat she saw crossing the Thames was part of the Catholic plot by telling her it was all in her head. But thinks the querent took my advice rather ill. What was the name they called the Continentals in the pamphlet I read? Waffle-faced tulip-huggers, methinks? Such japes. Hear ye, hear ye! Catholic terror plot to blow up Parliament foiled! Gunpowder barrels discovered in cellar! Hear ye! <sighs> I hope my dad never watches this because he will endlessly roast me for not remembering Guy freaking Fox. Oh my gosh. This whole game has been fantastic and great and loads of fun, but it is also just a big slap in my face of how much of this kind of information that I learned in high school and just tossed it out. Oh my gosh. Mm. Disturbing reports just in from Westminster that barrels of gunpowder were discovered in a cellar under the Houses of Parliament late last night. Sources indicate that this gunpowder plot was a Catholic conspiracy led by Robert Catesby and assisted by a Continental by the name of Guido Fox. Or Guido Fox. I don't know. I don't care. Uh, I'm just, I'm just disappointed in myself. Tis well to jest that Mary paint is well to sneer and mock until her views become the norm and will be quite a shock. But for now, let's laugh at her and how her knees laugh. How her knees laugh, la 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 la. And she comes back immediately to say, I told you so. Good day, Mistress Payne. You seem in good cheer. That I am, Dr. Foreman. This day I am taking my niece on a lovely outing to see the cockfighting in Vauxhall. Ah, there is a cockpit in Vauxhall now, is there? Aye, and a very fine one. And I did think we need a nice day out to turn our minds away from that terrible affair of the Catholics plotting to blow up the Houses of Parliament. And my niece does so love the cocks. <coughs> Doubtless, madam. Hmm. And the gunpowder plot was indeed a terrible business. They say it was the doings of a group of young Catholic nobles from the Midlands, do they not? And that the gunpowder was ferried across the Thames at Lambeth under cover of darkness. Doubtless, t'was the very same boat I did tell you about, Dr. Foreman. And as I recall, t'was your opinion that what I saw was naught but an idle fancy. On my honour, Dr. Foreman, I warrant you would not be so quick to dismiss my concerns now. Indeed, after this frightening affair with the gunpowder, many folks in Lambeth are paying heed to my warnings about Catholics and Continentals. <coughs> Doubtless, madam, but this day your concern should be your health. 
for I do remark that your eyes are red and irritated in appearance, and you seem troubled with a hacking cough. For how long have you had these troubles? Only these past few days, and as well as my eyes and my cough, I do also find it a trifle vexing to breathe. Then let us now consult the stars. What ails Mistress Mary Payne? My eyes itch, I cough, and I find it hard to breathe. What ails me? The querent is suffering from bloodshot eyes, a condition characterized by red itchy eyes. Pluto in retrograde. This indicates the illness will get worse before it gets better. The querent's lungs have been harmed by the inhalation of noxious odors. The moon in retrograde. This suggests the illness is temporary. Nah, I don't think she smokes. The querent is suffering from the green sickness, a disease that can provoke short-windedness owing to a buildup of venereal frustration. Mercury, this indicates a psychological factor. Hmm. Eyes itch, cough, hard to breathe. This has the itchy eyes. Hard to breathe. Hard to breathe. Uh, Mercury, this indicates a psychological factor. This is one of those situations where it could be any of them. I'm sorry, I just feel so guilty. I forgot who Guy Fox is and I forget you know, this game worked very hard to make it historically accurate. And I'm ashamed of myself. And I just, I can't get over it. I can't focus on curing this woman's illness. I don't know about the inhalation of noxious fumes. Unless some, she said something that I wasn't paying attention to. Apparently I've done that a lot this game. Ooh. But again, as stressed out as I might come off, I'm having a great time. And I can already see the replayability in this. And I cannot wait. Oh, Mary Payne. I don't think it's temporary. Sure, why not? Ah, madam, you are troubled with the green sickness. According to my medical reference, it is a rather unusual malady occasioned by uh, the accumulation of venereal frustrations that have not been evacuated from the body. Ah, yes, this would cause the breathing problems you now seem to be experiencing. And as well as the alarming pallor you appear to be developing on your face. And now it says here that treatment may be obtained by partaking of carnal pleasures from either... Look, so mercy! What is in you, Dr. Foreman? Never did I hear such filthy insinuations. On my word, I do apologize, madam. Indeed, it does appear that the green sickness is suffered only by young maidens. And you are not... Uh, in indeed, uh, perchance I... Uh, uh, read my chart upside down? Uh, uh, doubtless there is a, a more ordinary explanation for your hold. What is that acrid odor? Methinks it does emanate from your clothing. Madam, have you been taking part in the anti-Catholic pogroms that Lambeth has witnessed these past days? The burning of houses and shops? The lynching of priests from trees upon Lambeth Green? Mayhap I have, and what of it? You should be congratulating me and my ilk for keeping you safe, and for sending a clear message to those Catholics who would plot against our Parliament and blow us up with gunpowder. Madam, these Catholics are our neighbours, our colleagues, and our friends. I beseech you to consider your actions, madam. Are not Catholics people too, just as we are? If you prick them, uh, do they not bleed? Aye, and their flesh does burn the same and all. I fear I do not follow your reasoning, Dr. Foreman. Are they not subject to the same diseases, healed by the same cures as we are? 
And if not cured, then, alas, taken so soon, so needlessly, I did never have the chance to... Oh, my sweet Avis, can you ever forgive me? Is something the matter with you, Dr. Foreman? On my honour, you do seem most troubled. Mayhap you should be going to consult with a doctor yourself. God keep you well, Dr. Foreman. Blessed day. I would like to officially rescind any and all appreciation I had for Mary Payne. She is an awful, awful woman. The Quirant did present with a cough, difficulty breathing, and irritation of the eyes. I di I guess I should have correlated that with being noxious fumes of some kind. Oh my gosh, this game has also succeeded in just making me feel dumb. <laughs> ah. I diagnosed the green sickness, but upon learning of the Quirant's recent Catholic burning activities, I did have occasion to revise my diagnosis to noxious odors. Methinks the Quirant took my advice most ill. Well, this Quirant can go to hell. And her, may her neighbor be Emma Sharp. Mayhap we make a list of which shops and taverns are Catholic owned. Methinks our actions could be a trifle more organized. No, no, stop this woman. You put her in jail immediately. Get her off my screen. Hey, hey. <coughs> hey, hey. London struck by plague. Playhouse is closed by order of the king. <laughs> we are in 2021 right now, and oh my gosh, this is hitting it so hard right now. Be advised that you, if you are experiencing any of the following plague symptoms, fever, abdominal pain, lumps on your groin, oozing foul pus, send word to local authorities and a team of carpenters will be dispatched to your place of residence to board up your house so that you may not roam about infecting others. Please ensure dead loved ones are ready to be deposited in the plague car when it passes each evening. Corpses deposited on the street outside of collection hours will incur a fine of one shilling. This game is making me feel a lot of feelings right now. God give you good day, Your Grace. How fare you this- Know you whether the plague will reach as far as Lambeth? Have you seen it in the stars? Ah, the plague that has begun to spread throughout London. Rest assured, Your Grace, if the plague does indeed reach Lambeth, the people of Lambeth will have me, Dr. Simon Foreman, at their service. My renowned strong water cure will doubtless be required. I bid you, read the stars for me now. Will or will it not reach Lambeth? Of course, as it pleases, Your Grace. Let us see what the stars have to say. Will the London plague reach beyond the city walls to Lambeth? Oh, you bet it will. Will this new London plague reach as far as Lambeth? The rumors of the plague reaching Lambeth are not credible. Neptune in detriment and retrograde. This represents being out of touch with reality. Oh my gosh, you... Oh. I could not have picked a more relevant game to play right now. Oh my 
gosh, I'm having a very surreal reaction to this right now. Death from the plague is God's punishment for our sins. Pluto, this represents death. The Archbishop has nothing to fear from the plague. He has but to exercise patience and the threat will pass. Saturn, domicile, and Capricorn, this advises patience. It is the Archbishop's duty to stay in Lambeth and help fight the plague. Mars, this advises war. Lambeth society may be peaceful now, but people can behave unpredictably during a grave health crisis. Venus domicile in Taurus, this indicates calm. Uranus falling in Taurus, this represents extreme unpredictability. I am feeling a lot of feelings right now. I, did, I didn't expect it to take this turn. I didn't expect the plague to come back and play this kind of role at the end of this game. I could not have stumbled across a more perfect or relevant game to play right now. I'm going to leave a glowing review on Steam. The Archbishop must embark on a voyage. The sun, this represents an authority, the Archbishop. Let's do it. Ah, yes. Uh, the stars are most clear on the matter. Very clear indeed. Then what do they say? Tell me! Uh, well, before I give you my answer, I would have your decision on granting me that medical license we spoke of on your previous visits. I am sorry, Your Grace, but I must insist upon it. Uh, I would gladly do so, but I find my hands tied due to various episcopal and doctrinal... <sighs> uh, as I see you are determined not to let the matter rest, I will speak true. Some years ago, the Queen's physician, Dr. Richard Smith, did write me a letter on behalf of the College of Physicians. He warned me in the strongest terms against granting you a medical license. So you see, I cannot grant you a license without raising the ire of the College of Physicians. But uh, now, now, Dr. Foreman, doubtless you are thinking that a man of my position... One of the most powerful men in England should not be so easily put off by such a letter. However, and methinks you know this from your own experience, the College is a terrifying organisation that will stop at nothing to get their way. One would be better off to find the Queen herself than the licensed doctors of London. For whilst our Lord God in Heaven may be merciful, the College of Physicians is not. I verily, I must own that what you say is very true. But mayhap I will furnish you with a letter of recommendation to the University of Cambridge. They may confer upon you a medical degree, and thereby a medical license. I thank you, Your Grace. Now, prithee, answer my question. I have bad news, Your Grace. Lambeth will not escape the plague this time. Things are quiet now, but as I learned during the plague of 92, events may change a pace. You must leave Lambeth before it's too late. Hmm, I feared as much. I must begin preparations for the removal of the palace household to Sussex. Before you go, Your Grace, I believe you were intending to write me a letter of recommendation. Um, well, indeed, I will reflect on the quality of advice you have given me over the years, and if I judge that you have acted with some skill, then... then I will have my chaplain draft you a letter of recommendation and have it sent to you. Good day, Dr. Foreman. I'm starting to doubt that he's going to do anything for us. The Quirant did wish to know whether the plague, which has lately begun to spread throughout London, will reach as far as Lambeth. I did inform the Quirant that the plague would reach Lambeth soon and advised him to leave while he still can. I think the Quirant is most pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. I will deliver a sermon on the lessons we might learn from the Noah and the Flood.
Sir, I thank you for your recent submission of several letters of recommendation. I am pleased to inform you that these letters being of sufficient quality and number have been credited toward the obtention of a medical degree. Please find enclosed your license to practice medicine. John Cowell, Vice Chancellor, University of Cambridge. Oh my gosh, is this the end? Did we do it? Oh my gosh, we reached the end game! You cannot board up my house! Tis not a plague house! You are mistaken! I do not have the plague! Let me out of here! Know you not who I am, you fools! I am Simon Foreman, daughter of astrology and physic! Fie upon those ungrateful wretches! Have I not always been there for them when they needed me? Am I not the doctor who risked his life to cure them during the plague of 92, when all the other doctors and their high-born friends fled London and left them to die? <sighs> Indeed, mayhap next time I will think again before risking my life in the service of the townsfolk, if this is the way I'm to be repaid. <sighs> and forsooth, if my deeds are so easily forgotten by the living, what chance is there for my work to be remembered by generations to come? What will the world know of me once I'm gone? I may have spoketh too soon. Oh, How will I be remembered after I die? This speaks of quiet violence exacted by a genteel woman with hidden motives. Moon exalted in Taurus, this represents a well-mannered lady. Venus domicile in Taurus, this represents quietness. Uranus following a Taurus, this represents a violent event. I will be remembered for having given something valuable to a psychopath to hide somewhere. What? Forsooth, how strange. Whatever could that be? A potion comprised of costly ingredients? Neptune in detriment in Virgo, this represents psychosis. My name will be mentioned in court during a famous legal battle. Mars, this represents combat. It will be a long time before my ingenious contributions are properly recognized by historians. Saturn domicile in Capricorn, this advises patience. Good angels will ensure the manner of my death serves as a testament to intelligence, accuracy, and soundness of my methods as an authority in the field of astrological science. The sun exalted in Aries, this represents a trustworthy authority. Mercury, this represents intelligence. Pluto, this represents death. Um. Oh, there was one more Aaron. My relationship with myself will change when I embark upon a voyage. To wit, my death will occur while traveling. Jupiter, this represents a voyage. Huh. I'm I'm having a hard time right now cuz I feel like I know it's the end of the game and I I feel like I'm saying goodbye to a real person and every everyone wants to be remembered you know for something good a lot of people will be remembered for the bad things they did Like, this is coming out of nowhere, this part. 
giving something valuable to a psychopath to hide somewhere. Did I give anything to anyone to hide during this game? That has to be something like a different line of dialogue I could have gone down. Hmm. This, this one, this one feels good. What does this say? I will die while on a voyage, but I never go on voyages, unless taking a boat across the Thames counts as such. Ah, I believe I have just predicted the manner of my own death. Well then. I had better note that down in my casebook, so that after my death it will be clear how truthful and accurate my astrological predictions verily are. For indeed, it is sure that after my death, my casebooks will be pored over and studied with great interest. For my work is of great historical importance, and now that I have a medical license, not even the College of Physicians has the power to discredit me. But. If I am to go forth into the world to make any further contributions to the advancement of medical science, I must find a way to pry these wretched boards off my front door. William! William! Fetch me a crowbar! Well, when I picked that answer, I was envisioning that he was, you know, well past, you know, breaking out of this plague house. And he was going to go travel the world and better himself and spread his knowledge and gain more intelligence but sure whatever he said i did wish to know how i would be remembered in years to come i did predict the manner of my own demise i will be crossing the thames in a boat if you be a historian reading this pray take careful note also, like, is Simon Foreman, is that a character or is that a real person? Is this something I can actually look up? I'm going to look it up real quick. Hold on. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, I went through this whole game thinking that this was just a character. No, Simon Foreman is a real person. He is an astrologer and he died on September 12th, 1611 in the river Thames. Oh my gosh. Okay, if anything else, this game has also piqued my interest in pursuing, you know, like I want to go through, I want to play this again. I want to be able to cross reference and search, you know, all this historical information that I've clearly forgotten since I graduated high school. Oh my gosh, this just blew my mind with the amount of research and care and detailing that the developers and the writing team, just everyone involved in this project, put so much thought and care and love into it. And I am blown away. Oh my gosh. I'm... I'm going to look at their Steam page. I hope they have more games. If not, I am going to find a way to donate because I need I need to see more from this company. Oh my gosh, we did it. We reached the end. Go in England in 1592. There begins our tale and all of it is true. Everything was so good. The writing was amazing. It was witty and funny. The characters had such different personalities. And I felt very attached to a few of them. And oh my gosh. Oh. I want to play through the credits. These people deserve to be known and have their names displayed. Oh my gosh. I am losing my mind. Not once did it ever occur to me to be like, hey, these might be actual real people from history. 
I want to go research this man's life now. I stayed up until almost 1 a.m. to finish playing this, and that is time well spent. Yeah, based on a true and truly ridiculous story, I want to go. I want to go research the history now. Oh my gosh. And it's, there's no more continue game. We have to start from scratch. I am definitely going to be replaying this. Okay. I've already been gushing nothing but good things about this. It's so well done. It is amazing. I love it. I want to throw money at these developers. I don't have a lot, but I want to throw it at them. The fact that also, like, I came in, it's like, oh, ha, 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 it's just a funny game where you're in Shakespearean London and you're treating people with astrology. But this was an actual real man in history. And I want to look into all of these different characters. I want, I have, I have a spark, a motivation to go and research all of this, all this information that was presented to me. Like I did, I did look up um, the Earl of Essex, uh, Robert Devereux, at one point, um, so I could see how to spell his name when I was doing a YouTube description. And I was like, "Oh yeah, that's a real person," but it never occurred to me that all of these other actors might have been real people as well. And oh my gosh, I stand an education game. So obviously, I cannot stop gushing about and praising this game to the highest order that I can. I encourage everyone to go and please play this game for yourself. I am definitely going to be replaying it, seeing what different outcomes I can do, um, how to approach Querence differently, knowing what I know now about how the story progresses. This has been nothing short of a wild roller coaster. And I'm going to be thinking about this for a long time. Thank you for joining me on this experience. In the comments, please suggest another game for me to play. I'm rekindling this love of just playing games for fun. And doing this as a YouTube project has been very fulfilling for me. So thank you again for joining me. And I hope to see you next time. Bye!